O.C., Gloriously Wrathful Creature, Unfathomable Tomb, Liquid Garden, Life Bearer, and Murderer. I must stop. I can always tell when an ode is not working. You must excuse me. I have a strange habit. I am standing on a cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean, see? And every time I encounter a body of water, I always have to stop and address it with a lamentation or salutation. Sometimes I dig up memories of old poems. Sometimes I make stuff up and I feel the water just getting angrier. My favorite, though, is Confrontation with Oceans, and my go-to text for such an occasion is Frank O'Hara's To the Harbor Master. It's just begging to be recited when the waves are wide fingers trying to reach up to where you're standing and wipe you out Old Testament style. I don't say my odes out loud, though, when there are fellow sea starers around. I don't want to preempt their assumptions of me. Let them think that I'm a romantic figure of tragedy with my salon brown hair flapping in unison with everything the wind orchestrates to move. Let them guess the reason for the longing in my eyes. Am I remembering an entombed lover in the depths? Am I some mad creature at night? Or I could just be a nature lover, whatever floats their boat. The reason I am standing on this cliff in Batanes, the northernmost patch of the Philippines, is because of an American. He has swooped down like a gray-eyed eagle and snatched me from my quiet apartment in Manila with entreaties of, this is the right thing to do, Crisanta. This is God's will. I should have told Ferdinand Turner to go to heaven without me. But desperation is desperation. It is a permanent smudge on my eyeballs, the perpetual pee under my saggy mattress. I'm sorry that I speak to you this way. I don't know how else to approach you. I feel like your Aurora before she became Sleeping Beauty. You're in the woods and you're surrounded by a supernatural light and you're singing a spectacularly robust song about dreams coming true. And I am a squirrel hiding from behind a tree, mesmerized by you. I'm waiting for other woodland creatures to surround you so I could slip among them and be unnoticed. But there is no one else at your bedside. There is only me and Ferdinand Turner, and we have no right to be in the same space as you. If you were only awake, you'd probably bat us out of your room with a broom, like a housewife throwing out a pair of rats that had managed to sneak in at night. You should see the desperation in our eyes every time we come visit you. You turn your face away, it's that abject. When people have nowhere else to go but the edge of a cliff, they have few choices. Some cling to the rocks, taking to heart all that raging against the dying of the light. Some let go because that's where everyone ends anyway, debris in the valley of death. And some, like me, sit down and write because we're not brave enough to live or die. We try to manage burdens by delegating the weight to a word transferring it to a blank piece of paper, squeezed into familiar letters and corralled by margins. Like an insect you put under a magnifying lens, you pull a wing out or a tail and see if it bleeds too much. <laughs>